Howdy, everybody. Welcome back. Now, I know recently I said I need to slow down buying books because I've got at least four already that I'm behind in doing my reviews, but I just couldn't help myself. I found two more this week that I just had to have. They are both by Mike Dawes. It's his Fly Tires Manual and Fly Tires Companion. Now, I actually have one of these already, but now they're available in Spiral Bound, so just couldn't turn that down. Now, I think both of these books were published in the 80s, and Mike Dawes is from England, so there are a lot of patterns in here from across the pond, but I'm not tying an English pattern for you today. I'm going even further away. This one's from New Zealand. Now, over there, this pattern is what they would call a lure, but over here, of course, we just call them streamers. And this one was created by a guy named Jeff Sanderson in 1941. And Sanderson ran a fly shop in Tarangi, which is a small city in southern Taupo, which is a destination fishing city on the banks of the Tongariro River. Now, maybe soon Anderson or Maurice Brown can tell me if I'm pronouncing that right, which I'm probably not. So this pattern today, it's not a forgotten fly. From everything I can tell, it's still pretty popular over there. It's just not very well known here. But I think it's a pretty cool pattern, and I think y'all are going to like it. Let's give it a shot. So there's one in the vise, a classic New Zealand pattern called the Red Setter. Pretty cool looking fly, I think. Now common sizes for this are 8 and 10s, just a 3x long. So this is a generic streamer hook, 3x long. I'm going to go ahead and pinch the barb right there, and I'll lay down a base of brown thread. Now the tail on this guy, it's squirrel, and Dawes book says brown squirrel, but a lot of the pictures I've seen have a red one. So I'm using a fox squirrel, but I'm sure any squirrel's gonna be fine. Let's see if that's stacked okay. I think it did. And I'm gonna catch it in pretty long. You might not see much of that dark on there, but you might see a little bit of it, and that's gonna be fine either way. So let's go ahead and catch this in with a pinch wrap. And I forgot to wax my thread, but we'll make it work. Just try to keep it on top right there. And that's gonna be good enough. So I'm gonna use some loose wraps and just make this part of my underbody going up. Okay, that's good enough right there. Just try to smooth that out so that I can have a little bit of a taper here. It'll make wrapping that front hackle a little bit easier when we get to it. So go ahead and park your thread in the back, grab some orange chenille, and strip off a little bit so you just have the, the thread core to catch in right here. Okay, I think that's fine. Now park the thread right in the middle where you want that center hackle to be. So go ahead and wrap this up to your thread, and this is a medium chenille if I didn't mention that. Now, a couple extra wraps right here. And I'm gonna part my thread just a little in front of that chenille and catch in my first hackle. And the recipe says a brown or light ginger, but I did see one tied that used this ginger with a little bit of dark in its core. And I think that looked really cool. So my ginger cape, I had some of these feathers right here. It almost looks like a furnace, but it, you know, came straight out of my ginger cape right there. And I'm trying to catch this in a little bit perpendicular. Okay, I think that's gonna work right there. A few extra wraps, and I'm gonna go ahead and snip this stem off right here just so I don't have too much to have to bury. Now here's a tip. Wrap this not all the way back against that chenille. That way we can take some wraps and then have it a little bit of a swept back middle hackle. And three or four wraps, I think, right here will be fine. And I know that looks like a lot, but it won't look like as much when we sweep it back right here. And you can either do this with your thread wraps, you could probably do it with the first wraps of your chenille. And I may just do it with both. So just try to sweep these back a little bit right here. Okay, I think that's gonna be fine. I got a little bit of a step down right here, but that won't make too big of a deal because the chenille is big and fuzzy and it can hide a lot of imperfections. 
Now just take the next piece of chenille, strip off a little bit, leave a little bare thread right there and catch this in. And we're pretty much just doing the, the exact same thing we did on the back right up here. This time park our thread up here where we're gonna catch in the front knuckle. I got a couple of fibers there that don't wanna cooperate, but I'll make them cooperate or else snip them. Okay, I think that's gonna be enough right there. Let's catch this off and then tie in the front hackle. And I'm gonna use that same type feather right here. It's a ginger, but has that dark center core. And again, I'm gonna to try to catch it in perpendicular, but with enough room here that I can sweep it back. And that's not going on just right yet. Okay, that'll work right there. A couple wraps going forward, and I am gonna to have to snip this stem off here. Now it's a little messy up front, so let's spend a few thread wraps right here just trying to smooth this out. It'll make wrapping this hackle a little bit easier. Okay, I think that's gonna be smooth enough. Now, same thing up here, a good four or five wraps. Okay, I think that's going to be enough. And I'm getting a little close to my eye, but we're going to have enough room for a head right there. And before I snip this excess off, I'm just going to push everything back and then work on my head. Okay, now let's snip this excess off and finish our head. And there we go. Any cleanup if you want, or just put a drop of head cement on it and call it done. So there you go, red setter. Pretty cool little pattern. I can't wait to give it a try here in the US. So I appreciate y'all watching. Take care and we'll see you next time.